Hello, I'm Ken with Orion Telescopes and Binoculars, and I'm holding here, and I've got attached to the telescope here, our new uh, Starshoot G4 deep sky imaging cameras. They are, uh, G4 means generation four. We've had uh, previous generations and they have been improved upon. Uh, we've got a color version and a monochrome version. Uh, both have their own special uh, niches in the market and uh, you have to choose which one you want. I'll go over uh, the benefits of each one. So let's get uh, down into the specs of each one. You'll need to choose uh, between color and monochrome, and that depends on how much work you want to do and how much sensitivity you want the camera to have. Uh, both cameras are quite sensitive. They, they go from uh, 0 0.01 second exposure time up to 60 minute exposures. So you'll need to choose between the monochrome and the color version of the camera. And that depends on what you want to do with the camera, how much sensitivity you want, how much work you want to do with, uh, to get the resulting image. Um, obviously, the color version is probably the simplest. Um, you shoot an exposure and you get a color image. Uh, it's just like your DSLR. Um, it's a, it's a one-shot color camera. The monochrome, when you shoot an image without a filter on it, it downloads a black and white image. In order to get a full color image out of a monochrome chip, you've got to uh, put a red filter in front of it, take an, a red exposure, then put a, blue a green filter and then a blue filter, and you'll take a series of images, red, green, blue, and then in the software, you stack the images to combine them into your full color image. Obviously that takes more work in order to get the full color image, um, at least three times as long exposures or three times as many exposures to get the image. But there's some really good advantages to a monochrome chip. First of all, the monochrome chip is much more sensitive than the color chip. All of the pixels are seeing all of the light instead of uh, some of the pixels just seeing red, some of them seeing green, some of them seeing blue. So it's uh, a much more efficient way to gather uh, the details. Uh, plus you can enhance the image by not just using red, green, blue filters, but uh, perhaps some narrowband specialty filters. You can shoot uh, hydrogen alpha light of uh, some emission nebula, oxygen 3, uh, sulfur 2. You can do some of those uh, Hubble style palettes that uh, you, you see with the, the Hubble deep field images or, uh, or images of, of nebula. It gets a very high contrast image. Plus you can shoot those exposures when there's a lot of light pollution or maybe when the moon is out too because narrowband filters cut through a lot of that, uh, that uh, background sky glow. The color chip in comparison is not quite as sensitive so in order to get the same level of detail and the same level of signal on the image you'll have to expose for a little bit longer uh, for each individual frame but then when it downloads you can just convert it right to a, a color image without needing all the extra steps of the filters. So definitely more convenient, just slightly less uh, sensitive of a chip. Well, let's take a look at the camera itself. Our G3 was a round body. This is a little bit different. This is a squarish body. It actually is more efficient cooling wise. So the, the cooler actually runs better with this one than the previous um, camera. The cooler gets down to at least 20 degrees below ambient temperature. And I think if you push it, it's going to be about 25. So we're saying minimum 20 degree efficiency uh, uh, drop on the ambient temperature and max about 25. On the back here, you see the fan. That's uh, going to help pull the heat away. There's some heat sinks on the side. That, that all goes towards the efficiency. And then while I got it back here, I'll show you the, um, the ports. You've got your USB port here in the middle. That connects to the computer. The brains of the camera are in the software. It's Camera Studio, and I'll show you uh, some screen grabs of that uh, on our computer here. On the side is the uh, power port. Now, the, the camera and the chip itself get the power from the USB. So this camera will operate just from the power coming out of the USB port on your computer. But the cooler and the fan need a 12 volt external source. So you'll want a separate um, cable running to a 12 volt battery, uh, your car battery, an inverter to, to go from AC to DC. Uh, that will give you the best noise um, characteristics on the chip. As the camera gets cooler, as you get down to that 20, 25 degrees below ambient temperature, the noise level drops. And I think the uh, the rule of thumb is every six degrees, six or seven degrees, you get about half the noise. So you drop this thing down 20 degrees and the image becomes very smooth, the signal gets very high, uh, very, low, very low noise. In order to connect the cameras uh, to a telescope, here you can see I've got the monochrome version attached to our six inch imaging um, astrograph. There's a couple of different ways to do it. The easiest and simplest is the inch and a quarter nozzle. It just slips in like a standard eyepiece. If you unthread the nozzle, you've got the standard 42 millimeter T-thread. So if you've got a telescope equipped with uh, camera T-threads on the back of it, this will just thread directly on. That's a very nice solid connection. 
And then behind that, this larger section here, this is a two inch nozzle. So um, you can take the inch and a quarter off and then fit this into any two inch diagonal or two inch focuser like uh, the astrograph here would have. While I'm inside, I'll just show you the other thread. Right above the CCD window is standard inch and a quarter filter thread. So if you've got um, an RGB filter set and you're using the monochrome camera, you can thread them on directly there, uh, or you can attach a uh, filter wheel in front and then get it uh, uh, an easy way to change filters just by rotating the filters. Uh, some of them are manual, some of them are electronic. But that's a standard filter thread there. So on the color version, you might put a light pollution filter and on the monochrome uh, camera, you might put the RGB or narrowband filters. The chip itself in both cameras is the Sony ICX 829. Uh, again, uh, color and monochrome version. Uh, it features 8.6 by 8.3 micron pixels, so uh, a nice, uh, not too small, not too large, it's a nice sensitive uh, uh, pixel for a variety of focal lengths, so you don't have to worry too much about exactly matching the, the pixel to the telescope. I, I found that that size works on any number of different telescopes, from fairly short uh, refractors all the way up to pretty large uh, castle grains. The cooler inside, again, uh, at least 20 degrees below ambient temperature. The chip itself will bin one by one, that's the native mode, and then also two by two. Now, uh, what do I mean by uh, binning? Each adjacent pixel can be combined, so four pixels in a, an adjacent little square can be combined into one larger pixel. It makes the uh, telescope, or it makes the camera more sensitive, so you can see fainter objects in a shorter exposure. It also lowers the resolution because now you've got four times less pixels, but it's a really quick way to identify and find and center the object that you want to take a picture of because in a very short exposure you can get very faint details. So binning is great for centering the object and then you go back to binning one by one or unbinned to get your final image. The cameras can also act as an auto guider. Now uh, most of the time you'll probably be using it as an imager and you'll have a separate auto guider maybe attached to the finder scope shoe like our mini auto guiders. Uh, or perhaps an off-axis guider underneath here with a little, uh, like the Starshoot auto guider. But if you have a DSLR and you wanted to use this camera as the auto guider, that's entirely possible. The last port that I haven't mentioned yet is the auto guider port here on the side. And that's a standard SBIG ST4 pinout. So if your mount is uh, equipped with an auto guider input, hook it up here, attach it to the mount, put your DSLR where you'd normally take the picture, and then you attach the uh, G4 to the guide port. Both cameras come with an included USB cable as well as a 12 volt power cable for the fan and cooler. All right, well there you have it. This is the G4 monochrome and color uh, deep sky imaging camera. They're capable of shooting 0.01 all the way up to 60 minute exposures with a 16 bit chip cooled down to at least 20 degrees below ambient temperature. So you can get all sorts of faint details, uh, nebulae, galaxies, uh, as well as uh, high power uh, solar system objects like uh, the moon and planets. Um, very sensitive chip and designed for all of your deep sky and solar system needs. All right, well, thank you very much. Clear skies.